Hi, I'm in the set of ceremony. Okay, but that's not really what people cared about though. This is what they really liked. Okay, personally, I didn't think it was that good, but people wanted to know how I made it anyways, so I decided why not make a quick tutorial. So here is how I made it. From my experience, most of the Botanica tutorials I see are mostly either only people talking about how they arrange and layer their pieces, or talking about sound design exclusively. I'll try to tackle both. Based on the comments, it seems you guys mostly want to understand how the sounds were made, so let's first go over the three main types of sounds that I used. So these are the types of sounds that sounds like you're listening to an overcompressed version of a song underwater. I don't know why, but they fit very well in the context of Botanica as a nice piece of texture. It also kind of reminds me of some sort of sound that a futuristic UI panel would make. I only really know two methods of making this, so if you have any other methods, feel free to use them. Firstly, let's start with an Ableton exclusive method that I'm not sure if it's replicable using Vocodex. It doesn't really matter for you FL users anyways, because you have your own method using the Edison noise removal feature. Uh, well, for those of us who don't have that luxury, the very first step you have to take is to make water. Huh? Oh, I don't mean literally. Here, let me show you. You can drag in pretty much any sound you want, as long as it has some harmonic variability. So, arps and modulated basses are great for this, since there's a lot of movement. Here's some sounds I'm using as an example. Now add a vocoder. The main effect comes from using these settings. Set the carrier to modulator, bands to 40, and the ranges to max. Then you can decrease the bandwidth, increase the gate threshold, and increase the depth until things start sounding good. Now play around with those values to get different results, and change the release time to get tighter or more sustained sounds. For post-processing, I like to add in erosion to add to the lossy feeling, some multiband compression, and a color plugin such as pitch map or chroma. This will get the sound to be in key. And yeah, that's basically it. You can also use this technique to make watery sounds like this. The other more universal approach is using a free plugin called Spectral Compressor. AU5 made a really good video on it and includes the download links as well as the method I'm about to go over, so I will link his video below. Pretty much what we're doing is we're individually clipping each frequency band, aka spectral clipping, and we obtain a difference between the clipped audio and the original sound using phase cancellation. Ah, if that sounds a bit complicated, don't worry, just set these parameters, duplicate an instance of the clean sound, and invert the phase. And in the plugin, make sure to adjust the threshold and curve to get your desired results. Okay, these are the sounds that get you feeling. They're a lot more commonly used, so it's important to include these. The basic idea for these sounds is to take some bass loops or any other interesting sounds and perform intense granular synthesis on them. That means you're basically playing an unholy amount of copies of the input sound at different starting positions with various effects on them. So be aware that some of your results could be very intense. To perform granular synthesis, I like to use a free plugin called Fracture. It has very intuitive and simple parameters, and there's a ton of presets to play around with so you can get a specific type of sound that you want. For example, for watery sounds, you can choose the preset Resonant Liquidity and play around with knobs until you get something you like. I suggest you record while you tweak the parameters though, because sometimes you miss a really cool result but can't really go back. But yeah, you just feed in some interesting sounds, play around with the parameters, and record the sessions. And if you want the samples to be in key, make sure to add a color plugin like Pitch Map or Chroma. Here's some results that I got. I feel like these sounds should be pretty self-explanatory. Pads are a great way to add atmosphere and fill up your soundscape. If you haven't been using them, what are you doing? These are honestly super simple to make. Just take some saws, draw some random notes in the pentatonic scale of the key you want, low pass them, add an unholy oh. amount of reverb, and add some multi band compression. If you want some movement, you can also add and modulate interesting stuff like comb filters, notch filters, and phasers too. Then, take some odd harmonic instruments like bells, draw some random notes in the pentatonic scale of the key you want, low pass them, add an unholy oh. amount of reverb, and add some multi band compression. And then, you can take a piano, draw some random notes in the pentatonic scale of the key you want, or I guess just take a single note and reverb the hell out of it, if that's what you want, I guess. 
but both methods are pretty valid. It all depends on what you need for a specific section. So now that you have the basic sound design, you'll need it to accompany some instrument. <laughs> There isn't really a right or wrong for what to use, but here are some instruments that I find super effective. <clears throat> Firstly, you're going to need some organic instruments. Pianos are great for acting as the foundational driving force behind the whole piece, so I definitely recommend that one. String instruments like violins and cellos contribute tremendously to intensity and somberness, so make sure you have some of those. I think soft guitars are also really nice as almost percussive sounding instruments and also for adding more texture. And yeah, probably get yourself a synth as well, because you're going to need to use a lot of saws and sine waves and maybe even sound design. Some other things that I find helpful are certain sweeps, impacts, and vocals. Nice, now that we have pretty much everything, how do we actually use... The first time I tried making Botanica, I ended up making something that lacked substance and support. Sure, I was taking advantage of swells and impacts for transitions, but overall, it was kind of constantly droning on without anything super interesting happening. That's why in this genre, it's super important to make use of starting and stopping. And silence. See? Did you feel the tension and release? So to actually understand this on a more practical level, let's walk through an example by making something together. <laughs> okay, I got so absorbed with making the piece that I completely forgot to record my process for making it. But it shouldn't matter anyways, since it's more important to understand why things are done rather than focusing on what I did. So instead, I will explain the general framework for how I approach arranging these pieces, and I'll walk through my piece as an example. So here's the framework that I tend to follow. I'm pretty sure I'm not consciously doing it, it's just what I've observed as I've analyzed my workflow. But also do keep in mind that everyone's style will differ, right? Like, Viznode's style of Botanica is very different from Linked Winters, which is different from, like, Shameless. So the best way to find a sound or style you align with is by simply making more music and experimenting. It'll also help you improve at music production, which I know, like, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Engaging in an activity more will make you better at the activity. <laughs> But yeah, with that in mind, here's how I approach making Botanica. So firstly, you want to start with a foundational motif that will drive your whole piece. For me, I have a chopped up piano motif that sounds like this. This is actually an intro idea for a song I'm currently working on. <laughs> I would recommend taking advantage of silence and making something with a lot of meaningful pauses to keep the piece interesting. Now that you have your motif, next step is to go borderline insane <laughs> listening to it over and over again. The point of this is to eventually conjure up a hallucination for how you want the piece to go, aka coming up with an idea for a song. With your idea, you can start laying down the foundations of the movement using the glitches and textures that you made. That's the primary use case I see for these sounds at least. It really helps create a skeleton or outline for the rest of your song. Note that it's also better to layer different types of textures on top of each other to make it more interesting. For example, I'm using the spectral gated sounds, some sizzly sounds, some crunchy textures, and some other textures that help make it sound a bit more interesting. And to emphasize the movement and transitions even more, I added some impacts and sweeps. So this is what it kind of sounds like so far. As you can probably tell, it still sounds pretty empty at the moment, so we move on to the next step, which is filling out the space. This is where you really hone in on highlighting the intense and chill moments of your piece, and what you decide to add will actually vary from piece to piece. I like to start with pads and build on the intensity or fullness with strings, low notes, atmospheric synths, vocals, and some soft rhythmic guitars. Notice that there's a couple sections without all of these layers. Those are the parts I want to sound more somber, so I've stripped the elements away from this part. Lastly, for the climax of the piece, I introduced some new elements such as a bass, brass, saws, and a really thick sub. So with everything stacked together, this is what our final result sounds like.
Yeah, and then my piece just kind of transitions into the intro. If this all seems a bit overwhelming, just remember that this was not done in one go by any means. It was an iterative process of slowly building up the track by adding layers one at a time to get closer to the idea that it was in vision, and that usually takes quite a bit of time. That's why I'm explaining this framework. We start from something broad and open-ended and slowly narrow down as we flesh out the piece. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this topic for now. I really hope this video was helpful for providing the fundamentals to making Botanica, and I hope I was able to at least provide some more information or inspiration. If you really like this type of content, please consider subscribing, but only if you really want to. God, I feel like such a sellout for saying that. I know I might have sucked a bit with some of the explanations because I tend to lose sight of the main point I'm trying to make, so if there's any questions, please ask. I'll try my best to answer them, and if you have any critiques, please let me know. I really I really do want to get better at this. Oh god, how do I end a video? Uh, thanks for watching everyone. I really hope you liked the video. Hopefully I get to see you guys next time. Please? Okay, that's enough of that. <sighs> Bye.